This video is brought to you by the Deck of Mini and their 5e campaign book Hecna on Kickstarter now. And it's brought to you by the Roll for Combat officially licensed Paizo podcast, beginning their new Agents of Edgewatch adventure. Hello and welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. Today we have our last, for now at least, set of die cast metal minis for Dungeons and Dragons available exclusively through Walmart. This set again features four player character minis and this time a young red dragon. This is, not surprisingly, the most expensive set of Walmart minis released thus far, coming in at just under $15. It's produced again by a company called Jada Toys, which makes a wide variety of little metal figures in this style for properties like The Walking Dead, DC Comics, Halo, Harry Potter, and Marvel. While those figures are generally made to be just showpieces or collector's items, these minis here can actually be used in your D&D games. So let's see how well they serve that purpose by opening them up and taking a closer look. The Human Fighter Mini may look familiar to you. It is the exact same figure that came in the first set we reviewed on the channel, just with lighter skin and red accents instead of blue. In case you're wondering, this figure weighs in at 30 grams, while your typical WizKids plastic mini doesn't actually register on my little kitchen scale, so I imagine it's a couple of grams at most. The Tiefling Paladin may look familiar as well. It's another variant figure of the Tiefling Paladin in the Beholder set of minis. You'll notice that a lot of these minis seem to have the wide stance pose. While it does look dynamic and helps hide the fact that these minis are generally taller than your standard WizKids mini, it also leads to taking up more than one square on your standard TTRPG gaming mat, which can lead to a little bit of crowding. The Drow Elf Rogue is probably my favorite PC mini in this set. While the paint job is still very basic, I quite like the literal cloak and dagger look of the mini. His standard standing pose also means that his base is a little bit smaller than the others, but is still a little bit over large for the standard battle map, unfortunately. The Dwarf Cleric looks like your classic Dwarven fantasy hero, standing with his heavy pauldrons and warhammer. While he's somewhat shorter than the other minis in the set, he does look a little bit larger in place next to your other Dwarf minis, which we'll see shortly. You can see on this figure that the paint job is a little bit sloppy, especially when you look at his hammer, where the silver paint bleeds into the handle and the brown from the base bleeds into the hammer head a little bit. Finally, the real reason that you're here, the young red dragon. He is freestanding and does not come on a base. Despite the simple paint job, I think he really looks quite striking in shiny red metal. Though I'm sad that they missed the opportunity to actually give us metal metallic dragon minis. I would be all about getting a set of minis like this for silver, gold, bronze, copper, and brass dragons. When placed on the battle map, he takes up a roughly 3 by 6 section of the battle map. For those who like to stay true to the stat blocks, a young red dragon should fill a 3 by 3 inch area. The wings of the dragon are actually made of a rather pliable plastic and can be moved around a little bit. So again, these minis probably aren't going to appeal much to you if you're off collecting Icons of the Realms or Pathfinder Battles minis, which have a different scale and level of detail. They're going to stand out on your table next to those other minis. But like the Beholder mini in the last set, this dragon isn't too bad really. He may be a little bit more cartoony looking than the fearsome dragon minis that we're used to from companies like WizKids and Reaper, but for 15 bucks, he could certainly be used in your adventures. If they repurpose this line to just include interesting monsters and dragons and golems and put aside the humanoid creatures here, I think they could fare better. They also need to recognize the limitations of their product and try to avoid creatures that need a complex paint job. I think with a bit more effort, they could pull creatures from the monster manual that they could do interesting things with. But again, in the end, this is really aimed at children who have no idea what Icons of the Realms really is. It feels to me almost like a product from the 80s, and I'm not sure how well it holds up here in the 20s. Are we calling it the 20s yet? But let me know what you think of this set in the comment section down below. 
That's all the Walmart figures we have to show you, so we'll be getting back to our regularly scheduled programming here now. It is interesting to see what else is out there, though, and again, my thanks to my buddy Jack for bringing these figures to my attention because I had not even heard of them until he actually saw them on the store shelves at Walmart. I also want to thank our sponsors for this video. First, the Roll for Combat podcast just began their new adventure, The Agents of Edge Watch, where the crew plays lawful good City Watch agents tasked with overseeing their district of the vast city of Absalom during the once in a century World's Fair known as the Radiant Festival. Now, what's unique about this adventure and this playthrough is that these characters have to stay within the law of the city in a game of Pathfinder, which often involves murdering everyone in taking their gear and everything they own as your prize, which really doesn't work if you're trying to be good, upstanding City Watch agents. Well, the game master of this adventure, Mr. Stephen Glicker, came up with an innovative way of solving that particular problem with an item that he calls the Lawbreaker Badge. The first two episodes are out now, episode zero, where you can meet the characters, and episode one, which begins the adventure and introduces the Lawbreaker Badge. It's loads of fun, and I think the way he incorporated the badge into the story could be used in a wide variety of adventures if you're trying to have a truly good aligned party. Learn more about it and listen today at your podcasting app of choice or over at rollforcombat.com. And thanks to our other sponsor for this video, the Deck of Mini and their Hecna campaign book. Hecna is a 5e compatible adventure and campaign setting book that's on Kickstarter right now. It features the story of the creepy carnival known as the Rebellia, overseen by the titular ringleader Hecna. The lead writer for Hecna is our friend Ashley Warren, who you may know from the Uncaged Anthology, the RPG Writer Workshop, and is part of the writing team for the Icewind Dale Rime of the Frost Maiden adventure. So this is the real deal. And for you many lovers out there, they're also getting close to, or they may have already by the time this video comes out, unlocking four new sets of minis, including a set of Clown Thrall minis, a series of Terrible Abominations, and a set of Carnival Scatter Terrain, like Ticket Booths and Popcorn Stands. Go learn more about the book today and be sure to get in on the Kickstarter to get everything at its best price. Learn more by clicking the link in the corner of your screen up there or in the video description down below. And finally, thank you for watching today. We've got some awesome videos planned for the next few weeks, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thanks for coming along on this ride to Walmart with me over the past week or so. Let me know how you're enjoying those Rhyme of the Frostbane figures as well. It's been awesome to hear what you've all been pulling in your bricks. Join the discussion over on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Otherwise, keep playing safe out there, have fun, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Mm -hmm.